A quick announcement before I begin the video, I now have a Patreon page. So if you'd like to support this uh, content, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe there. If you'd like some behind the scenes access, some uh, early access to videos, uh, shout outs, and even the ability to uh, help decide what the next video topic will be, you can go ahead and uh, subscribe there. Anyways, back to the video. When looking at the history of the world from ancient times to medieval to the contemporary era, a question may arise. Why has nothing changed? I'm not talking about technology, religion or even society, but politics. Why has, for all of human history, politics not, at its core, changed? You may be thinking, but politics has changed. The signing of the Magna Carta in the 13th century, the spread of liberal democracy in the 20th century, or the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights could all be examples to prove that. But think, what have these things done to fundamentally change the core of human politics? War may not be a perpetual and existential threat to most people anymore, but to some it still remains a fact of life. Conflict between nations may not be carried out with bullets as much as it used to, but conflict still persists in subtler and more unconventional means. Why, over the course of humanity's 300,000 years of existence, have we not been able to eradicate international conflict? This has been the most pertinent question of political science in the last century. Some philosophers believe we can overcome this. Woodrow Wilson fanatically pursued lasting world peace through a democratic world order. So too did subsequent American presidents. Yet they all failed. They failed because they did not understand the international order they had tried to reshape. One built upon greed with no regard for ideals or philosophy. One built on anarchy and selfishness. Hans Morgenthau is considered the father of this more pessimistic philosophy, known as neorealism. The international order is simple. There is no order. International politics is defined by a lack of authority. No overarching institution or power can exercise any kind of coercive action on a nation. Because of this simple fact, countries fend for themselves, seeking only to pursue relative economic or strategic gains. This lack of order brings us to the security dilemma, neorealist's primary explanation for why conflict persists. Take Norway and Sweden as a hypothetical example two countries with no animosity towards each other. Norway, for whatever unknown reason, begins investing more in its military, recruiting more soldiers. Sweden sees this across the border and, not knowing what Norway's intentions are, does the same. Norway then sees Sweden beefing up its military and begins beefing up its military even further, purchasing higher grade weaponry. Sweden sees this and does the same. Norway sees that and begins forging alliances with Western nations. Sweden, in response, seeks allies in the East. From one simple decision, regardless of the intentions, a cycle began, leading to tension that will eventually end in some form of conflict. Whether conventional with bullets and dead soldiers or unconventional through economics and propaganda. It is this lack of knowledge of each other's intentions that makes international conflict so persistent. Pakistan and India may cite religious and ideological differences as the reason why they hate each other, but it's nothing more than a justification to hide behind. The real reason they live in perpetual conflict is because they don't know what the other is thinking. From this security dilemma arises another key neorealist principle, the importance of power balance. Smaller states will ally with great powers that protect their relative economic and strategic gains. Those that attempt to do otherwise fail. Saddam Hussein's attempt to forge an Iraq which was independent on the world stage failed because power had to be balanced. When the Nazis tried to shape the world order into a new one based on fascism, with Germany at its core, they were defeated by states which understood that international competition had to be maintained and power had to be balanced. Throughout the entire history of the Soviet Union, its foreign policy was driven by an attempt to export Marxist-Leninist philosophy around the world. In the end, they were defeated by America's less idealistic foreign policy, which ignored the ideology of its allies. Which brings us to another point. Ideology does not matter. States which form foreign policy decisions based on ideology will fail, as did the Nazis and the Soviets. 
Foreign policy decisions must be coldly based on the pursuit of economic or strategic gains. Today, we can see this fact in action. America's post-Cold War foreign policy has been driven, much like the Soviets before, by a desire to export their worldview. And what's come of it? Iraq is now a puppet democracy of Iran. Libya is now a failed state where Russia and Turkey battle for influence. And Afghanistan, well, we all know what happened there. Every instance where America attempted to spread liberal democracy has resulted in other world powers coming in and spreading their influence. World powers which understand the international order. This cold reality of international politics is just like a capitalist market, where nations are firms and corporations. In a capitalist market, firms must do whatever it takes to survive and remain profitable, regardless of emotion. They seize on opportunities to create more wealth, they attempt to keep the market balanced and competitive, colluding against any firm which attempts to build a monopoly, and they copy each other's strategies to remain relevant. In the same way that Instagram and YouTube copied TikTok with short videos, and Instagram and Facebook copied Snapchat with stories, Russia copies America with foreign intervention in Syria, and Saudi Arabia copies Iran in Yemen. Even China, who ideologically opposes any kind of foreign intervention, citing it as imperialism, has been inspired by the American military base building strategy. Now they own their very own military base in Djibouti and are seeking another in the Solomon Islands. All are simply attempts to ensure profit and protect competition, whether literal in the case of capitalist firms or metaphorical in the case of nations. The international order, should neorealism be believed, is built on chaos, disorder, fear and selfishness. This is the way it's always been, and until we can see into each other's brains and understand each other's intentions perfectly, will likely continue to be. Nations will continue to react to and copy each other's actions on the world stage. Atrocities will continue to be committed in the name of ensuring relative economic and strategic gains, and the world will continue to condemn them. Until the underlying root of human mistrust and greed is addressed, this will simply continue to be the way of the world. We can attempt to strive towards a utopian world order built on compassion and human rights, but there will always be another side to balance the power.